Hi, it's Jamie. Thank you for joining me today. I wanted to bring uh, some ideas about how to make wreaths to you today. And I've seen lots of uh, different styles out there uh, roaming around on the internet and uh, I wanted to show you my take on them. We're going to use a uh, tool and this is a really soft, pliable tool. Got this at Walmart. We're going to use this uh, mesh tubing got from the Dollar Tree. Just like its bright color. We're going to use uh, some frame wreaths. They came from the Dollar Tree also. I had this on hand. This is actually really thick. Uh, sturdy netting for crinlin. It's actually for crinlin making. I thought, well, I wanted to see what I could make with this. I have uh, some flowers that I got at the Dollar Tree and I've just separated them. So we'll see how we can use those. Found these the other day and this is a uh, little uh, in the shape of a leaf and then in the shape of a pumpkin. And it's just little small uh, strings of LEDs. I thought that might add a nice little interesting touch. And then I thought uh, some signs that I got from the Dollar Tree. So we'll see which ones look best with what we create. So we'll have to figure that out. All right, well, let's get to it. Okay, I'm gonna start with a white mesh and with a circle wreath ring. And they're super easy to do. Basically, you wanna start on your outside ring because they naturally want to fall to the outside. And I'm just gonna tie a knot to secure the netting to the base. It'll all be hidden, so it doesn't matter what that looks like. I've got just a little bit of a tail, just a simple knot. And basically, I'm going to use my mat here, which are just nine of the cutting mats. Uh, gorilla glued, or glip, gorilla taped together. And I'm going to use, I'm going to start on my eight and I'm going to go to my four inch mark. Basically, I'm just pushing it through and pulling out a loop. And they don't have to be exact, get them approximate and uh, that's what it'll take. That's all it'll take. And you'll push these quite close to each other, so that's what will get your fullness. And I'm pulling this quite tight at the base. row you have a couple choices you could literally just move up to the next row I like to uh, wind off or tie off each of my rows so that's how I'm going to do it you see it's nice and full um, 
which is what you want. And we'll end up fluffing all these little loops out at the very end, just to give it a even more full look. And there is our first row. And they will all lay, lay down. And then to start the next row, I'm going to turn it just a little bit so that it's at a different spot. So you don't have all the knots in the same spot. It's just always a good idea offset a little bit and do them all over again So we're going to, next wreath we're going to work on will be with this crinlin. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into sections and then I'm going to do the pleat method. I think that'll turn out really nice. But I've got to get this burly stuff cut. We want to take our form and we want to create it into something that we can attach our netting to. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some pipe cleaners and just make a working tr uh, wreath form. And I think I'm going to pick out uh, green. So we're going to put, let's see, two, four, six, seven. Let's go five each one. Because they need to not crush each other. But um, So there's six sections on one of these frames. So that would be 30 pipe cleaners, chenille sticks, whatever you'd like to call them. And actually I only need 15 because I'm going to cut them in half actually. basically going to take just a piece and try to get it going
Okay, executive decision. I made a couple of these, and I think that is too, too, um, too wide. This is how I create different designs. This is my design process. as tight as possible just to give it more chance of standing up. So now we are ready for what I call the fun part. So I have my three wreaths assembled and started. Um, but you know me, if I can squeeze Cricut in this any kind of way, I'm going to. So basically I printed out It's a Girl because I'm going to make a banner on one of these for a um, baby shower. So basically just going to weed it. I don't even have my tools over here because... I picked large letters um, with not a lot of intricate parts. You can see, it 
it's a girl. So I measured, I used my long ruler and measured the diameter of my wreath and figured out where I wanted to put it. I'm going to show you how I assembled these or put these, attach these flowers. I saved one last one to show you, but I took this super long ruler and I said, oh, well, it's 18, but I wanted to come in a couple inches. So then I actually made the verbiage 12. So it'll set right about here and then have white satin wrapped around. I think that's going to look pretty. our little banner for our wreath. So now to show you how I attach these flowers, I went ahead and pre-wired them with just some pipe cleaners. Got my placement. I saved a little gap here and here for my banner, but I want to put this last one right in here. And what I decided is that um, I like it to be in this little third groove. So if you can see, you have the one, two, one, two, three. So it's in this middle one. I shouldn't say third, but between the second and third rings. So basically you just stick it down in there. Get it about where you want it flip it over and now start using your pipe cleaners to attach it to the frame. of fluffing and bring your loops back in because they like to move around. So this sash, let's go ahead and uh, peel it. that perfect. I am going to just because that's who I am. I'm going to actually press this line out out here that was on the outer edge. Try to get it as smooth as I can. Okay, there it is. Done with the mat for today. Oh, isn't that pretty? Yeah, I think my daughter will like this. This is for our newest grandchild, first granddaughter. And we're just a little bit excited about it. So it'll be something like that. So what I'm going to do is I can now give myself a cut over here. And I 
was debating on whether to, to make dovetails and all that with the end, but actually I wanted just that soft pull over the edge look. So what I'm going to do is make it rid of the fray. I'm going to gather up this end. Put a wire tie around it. It's not a wire tie. A pipe cleaner. Excuse me. Or a Chanel stem. Whatever you're familiar with. The verbiage. I left it a little loose here, a way I can adjust it. Now it's just time for fluffing. So this, just to recap this wreath, this took uh, one of the metal frames from Dollar Tree and I had these flowers on hand already and then I took blanket binding and I created this sash for the wreath. So just to recap on this wreath, uh, I took a metal frame from Dollar Tree. I had netting on hand. I created those loops. Went all the way around on each ring. Had these flowers on hand. created the sash with blanket binding and uh, iron on glitter heat transfer vinyl and uh, there it is I think that's a pretty uh, a pretty wreath to give as a gift all right so here's our next one I named this one pretty as a peacock for obvious reasons I had this beautiful ribbon. So this is that uh, crinolin material. And uh, wow, I really like how this one came out also. So I wanted to show you uh, how I created these poofs. So basically I had all this ribbon on hand. So this beautiful sheer with a gold swirly. The 
peacock ribbon and then uh, this beautiful teal I, I list this is probably my favorite color right there so basically I took them I folded them good side together so that when I stack them they're all going in the right direction fold it in half fold it in half again try to get those edges lined up and then go about an inch up on this wider ribbon and just cut off and it no measurements because it is what it is if it comes out see how that edge came out right there this is how I was fixing that just flip it over take it and cut it and then make that dovetail more times than not you don't have to do anything else to it and it's just an easy uh, easy way to when you're doing a lot of them to get them done in a reasonable amount of time so half and half this one I don't go quite up as much you don't need to with a, a narrow ribbon and they came out great and then the last one doesn't have a right or wrong side so it doesn't really matter half half get your edges pretty well lined up and then Just give that edge so then get all these out of the way they're scraps pretty scraps but they're still scraps I see a lot of stuff but I haven't thought of a way to use those yet so then what I do is I take I think it helps to have different widths but then what I do is I take them and I crisscross them right put the colorful one on top if you're using a print doesn't matter if, if like that's that way or if you it, do, it doesn't even matter by the time you put it on the wreath and then you're just going to go from the center out and sort of just pleat it with your fingers one side to the other and it looks like a jumbled mess but that's all right so then i take it the pipe cleaner pinch it in the ha in half and give it a pretty good twist here try to make it as tight as possible because that'll help it to stand up on the wreath and I give it three and I, I do fluff a little bit here but not not anything not anything that takes a lot of time only because there's going to be a lot of fluffing on the wreath itself so then you take it and pull it together Here's our wreath form. We have one hole left, and this this is such uh, stiff material. Boy, you can just manhandle it all you want. I've been putting it on this ring here. One, two, three, four. So it's on the number two. Stick it in. Hold it with your hand. Flip it over. And then pull it pretty tight. Again, that'll help it stand up two three and then I just give it a, a curl down and get it underneath where it would touch the door so again you don't scratch your door or anybody else's door so then we have this and I, I, I can pull it pretty hard and I'm just basically trying to get it where you can see all the pretty ribbons especially this one and I have some peacock feathers that I probably will add to this and maybe even paint some teal pumpkins and this may be uh, for my outer door because again this crinless stuff is just some tough stuff so there is that wreath so to recap on this one use the form I cut the the strips I cut this into strips about yay wide 
pinched them together to create these little poofs, wired them on the frame, and then added the decoration, which I chose to go with uh, a peacock theme. Just love this color here. So uh, kind of looks festive with the gold on it. And you just fluff it until you're like, okay, that's it. It's good. You'll know when, when you've got it to where you want it. So there it is. our peacock wreath. All right, moving to the next one. Okay, so here is our third wreath, uh, which will be, which will finish out this week's projects. So um, this is the, the first one we made and we actually spread out each loop. So that's the difference in the look. The other one looked very loopy. This one just looks fluffy. Uh, I've attached the sign that I chose for it. Uh, something that I did is I added this to the back. It's just hot glue and it's just to stabilize the sign because I'm going to actually add flowers to this one. And the way to get those to attach and the sign is attached like this and I usually add a little raffia loop to the back but I will go in and thread these up through here and tie them off. So that just sort of helps our sign set in place because with adding flowers what I'm going to do is I have these from my stash to create some picks where I basically just took uh, these were from the dollar store and I just floral taped them together to make a little cluster but let's see what we can create with what we got here
third one. I'll probably fiddle around with these and add a little bit more glue. But essentially you just add flowers until you have something that you like. I may come in and add some more leaves and these little bud flowers. Or find some more of these little sunflowers. Well, there are three different styles of wreaths. Uh, the two loops, one kept as a loop, one like this spread out. So basically just took each loop and spread it. Spread it to its full width all the way around. Well, I hope you enjoyed these projects. I hope they give you some uh, ideas that you can use for yourself. And uh, until next time, happy crafting.